I know. It's rare. I can't believe we're even making this video. But last week, we took a loss on the stream, and it's important that I recap it for you guys. Now, losses are all part of the game. Us on stream, we have a very good win rate. However, losses still come up, and this is how we learn and adapt from trading. I want to explain it to you guys and give you more transparency and show you guys every time we take a win or a loss, I'm going to show you guys both and do what most people want. Because in this game of trading, you are in the business of losing. It doesn't matter what level you get to in your journey, you will still always have losses. But hopefully in this video, I can show you guys how to reduce your losses and manage your positions from a neutral perspective and how I was able to go from having a 20 tick stop on this position to cutting this at around minus 10. So we will jump straight in, let's not waste any time. And if we just go to the five minute and I'll show you guys this position, we took this on, on stream on Thursday the 14th of December, so you guys can go back on the YouTube channel, watch that stream. This is why I was looking for buys. So I was essentially looking for buys up into this resistance, given the fact that most retail traders will be trying to short this resistance with their stop loss just above that high. Looking for this, you know, big retracement back down to these levels, which we did end up doing exactly that, which I'll show you guys. We ended up exactly as expected coming up, wicking out these highs and completely retracing. And it took later on in the week for me to make back that short um, and, and catch that nice move down. So that's the ideology behind the trade, buying up into where most people are trying to sell. Exactly the same here. Sell down into where most people are trying to buy, and that's your trade. People buy off this support. If you ever see a very clear double bottom like this on gold, where price bounces off it but never grabs the lows, be very, very careful. Because 90% of the time, if not higher, you're always going to see price on gold grab the lows before grabbing the highs and seeing something like that. So in terms of the, the entry that we got, we were pretty much in this range coming into the London session. Um, and you know, we jumped on the charts around here. Price had already pushed back down. We didn't get that trade opened and pushed down before we could even think about it. And then we ended up retracing, um, you know, closed doji, grabbed some lows, rebroke the highs, you know, longs from here would have been lovely. Um, and you continued to push up. Now at this point here, when we got this strong closure above and now as this 30 was forming, this 30 had closed above this very key resistance and opened with an instant bottom wick. See this little wick here on this on this 30? Well, that wasn't a thing in, in the time where we had our entry. I'll, I'll draw this on so you guys can see it a little bit more visual. This is very important. This is a great trade. I'll show you what we could have done better, but technically this is a great trade. So price opened on the 30 and instantly pushed down. Now, even if price is gonna flip back bullish, you want to see that bottom wick created first. So then by the time the 30 closes, it looks something like this in a natural trade. You get in once it flips bullish and then you get an amazing buying opportunity and you risk off the low of the 30. So that's what we did. Price opened, instantly pushed down. And as it was pushing down, I had a buy stop on the break of my on the break of the 30 high, basically saying to myself and everyone on stream, if this 30 can reflip bullish, we should have a nice continuation of this amazing drive here and continue pushing into these highs. If we just get rid of these drawings and I'll show you guys exactly what happened, I'll show you guys what I maybe could have done differently, is if, it, if you're gonna trade this style of getting in on the flip of the 30 once it's created a bottom wick, you don't really wanna get tagged in within the first 10 minutes of that 30 candle. Because if you're gonna create a bottom wick and this is how gold moves, if gold is gonna be bearish to then flip back bullish by the time it closes, it's typically gonna happen towards the end of the candle. So if it happens right away, right away, I start to get a little bit skeptical. And that's what I did in this position. And that's probably the only thing that I could have done. However, once I got tagged in, it was very hard for me to quickly manage that position. What you guys can also see, and what we talk about a lot on stream is intraday liquidity grabs, where price will, I'll replay it so you guys can see. Price is gonna have a continued push up you're always going to come down and grab some previous lows. So you guys can see for this entire move up here, what did we not do? We didn't liquidate any lows. See what we do here before we have this push up, price pushes up, grabs this intraday low and has the continuation. Well, for this push up, we hadn't grabbed any lows. And I was starting to be very, very cautious of that once we had got triggered into this trade. 
So this five minute, you know, closed with a nice rejection. I was like, cool, let me just see how the next five minutes gonna go because, you know, as soon as we start tapping into this resistance, you know, I'm gonna be break even very, very quick. You know, I wanna get runners much higher, but as soon as we tap into this, we could have easily, you know, just seen something like this. But at that point, you know, I already have risk of the table um, and, and be managing my position. So I was like, cool, but this five minutes still closed above, still rejecting. Obviously, we haven't grabbed any five minute lows. We've just created even more liquidity below this low. Let me see how the next five minute is going to close. And then the next five minute came back up to entry, failed to break back above the high and then closed back bearish. And at this point, the fact that we've tried to break back above the highs, we've closed bearish. We still haven't grabbed any lows. At this point here, I decided to cut my position right there. I didn't let it come anywhere near my stop loss because I now know if we were gonna drive, this would have been the time to drive. However, if we start closing bearish, that is the point where I don't need price to come anywhere near my stop loss. That's my exit point right there. I don't need to start holding this trade all the way down here and go sit in more drawdown. If I can manage my risk and cut my loss quick, amazing, I'll get the re-entry and I can make back you know, minus 16 ticks very, very fast. Original stop was somewhere around here, around 28. However, we cut this position at minus 16 half risk. So around, I think I lost $1,000 on this position, trading five contracts. Usually I would trade 10, but this stop loss had to be a little bit wider. I decided to go in half risk for that reason and then cut my position right there at minus 16 ticks. And if we had kept the original stop loss of somewhere around here, look what happened straight after came right back down and liquidated all of these lows that I spoke about. So entry, you know, arguably possibly a little bit too early. However, risk management, perfect. And that's all you can do. You can't sometimes control if you get tagged into a buy stop. All you can do when you know that the trade is wrong is understand it from that neutral perspective and cut it as quick as you can. Because I would have gone from, you know, taking a 16 tick stop loss to if I'd held this to doubling what my loss would have been, which I think is very, very powerful for you guys to understand. And then it took us time. We ended up continuing to range for the day. And you know, this is also what's interesting. This is how you guys also want to be trading. We broke back below this resistance here, came back up for the retest, and then continued for another leg down of plus like 60 ticks. So it's like, why do you want to? Why do you want to go hold this position in drawdown where you could literally cut this at minus 16 ticks once you get confirmation to enter? flip the bias, take the other side and make back way more and still be green on the day. So again, comes back to trading from that neutral perspective. And as you guys can see, and then we ended up absolutely ripping with them highs because like I say, most people who are trying to sell off this resistance, looking for this big swing and big retracement of that FOMC move, where's their stop going to be? Well, it's just going to be right above that high. And then there's the play. Came back down, re grabbed the lows again, Flip back bullish and I had some sells later on in the week, which ended up being the exact move that I spoke about where if I show you guys the position here, where's Friday? Right there. That was it again. So we had liquidated all of these highs that I spoke about. We came back down. We had liquidated a double top here. This is just on current price action. We liquidated the, the double top, hadn't grabbed any intraday high. We wake the highs. Again, same thing again, this 30 opened with an instant top wicket. I said in the market chat, sell stop below the 30 low, risk off the high. And on the live stream, you guys again go back to Friday the 15th. I spoke about how price had all of these lows down here to come and liquidate. And they were the targets for the day. And that was again, you know, close this on average around a 70 ish tick position. And this is why it's so important to manage your risk and manage your losses. You will never, ever, ever become a 100% winning trader. It's not gonna happen. But from this video, I want you guys to understand the value in managing your position and knowing when it's truly going against you and when you should get out. It's very, very key. Manage your position from that neutral perspective. Keep your losses small because I promise you, you'll make back them small losses very, very fast. So if you guys have any questions about this trade at all, feel free to leave it in the comments below and I'll see you guys on stream tomorrow. Peace.